So the corals in my previous reef tank and the ones that we want to move into my new 180 gallon have been sitting out here in this 65 gallon for the last three, maybe four weeks while the new tank goes through its initial cycle and now that it's completed that we're ready to start adding the new equipment so let's get to work So what I want to accomplish today is the removal or moving of the live rock that's sitting in the sump to make room for the hog algae scrubbers as well as all the other uh, Neptune related products that we're going to put in there. All right, so here's the sump arrangement that we originally set up on the 180 gallon tank. It has a micron sock down at that end for trapping particles. Uh, it's got a few pieces of live rock in there that came out of the previous system that will biologically help um, uh, inoculate the tank with you know sponges and things like that. It also has a, an old Euro Reef brand protein skimmer. Interesting enough, in the time that it's run, which has been two weeks, that's all the organics that it's generated off of all of that live rock. So at this point, what I want to start working on is the components that we're going to add into the system. So I've gone ahead and pulled the main power, the main water pump's power source, so that the flow will stop going into the sump. So you can kind of see here's the uh, micron sock. I don't know what the uh, density of it is. It's not as fine as those other ones, certainly not as fine as the one we started off with. Uh, and then this would be the ring that supports um, the uh, sock itself. So now I've opened up the entire front end of the sump, which is where I want to move or begin to move those pieces of live rock to. So I want to retain the pieces that still have some sponge growth and such on them, but I don't want to overcrowd that end uh, where the sock itself sits fear that Scott will end up yelling at me, um, but I really don't want all of this rock in the sump because it's kind of in the way, but maybe I can end up moving it. Some of it may not be really worthy of keeping, such as this that I don't really see anything on. There's a few pieces here that have some noticeable growth on. And those pieces I'm kind of placing at the, the bottom end of that sump. Okay, so I've got most of the pieces, in fact all of the pieces, out of the back end of the sump. Got a few pieces there that'll be underneath the uh, micron sock, but I've now opened up this area to begin to place equipment in there. And the first component, I think, is gonna be um, the algae scrubber. So this being a double package of the HOG 3.0, which I believe is the biggest HOG-style algae scrubbers that Santa Monica Filtration makes. Go ahead and start opening them up here, get them prepped. They're pretty easy to get installed, only take a few moments. Attractive literature, operating instructions, packed well. The HOG 3 has two LED ballasts on it.
take that back. The Hog 3 has one LED ballast on it. And essentially that's the unit that's going to fit between the two halves of the sump wall. And so again, here is the HOG algae scrubber. HOG basically stands for hang on glass, meaning it'll uh, clamp around a glass sump or a glass aquarium. It's two halves. There's cardboard protection during it. There's a black sleeve. I'll talk about that in a moment. What you have is an inner and an outer piece. The outer piece, in this case, has six red LED lights on it. The inner piece has the uh, green grabber uh, strings as well as the uh, high textured surface, which allows the algae to grab a hold of. This just clamps between uh, the in and the outside of the sump. It's an easily installed unit. And so the inside unit already has the airline prepped for you, coiled up and taped to the back side of the unit. Just easily remove that and then extend out the airline itself and then don't 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 blink because this installation is going to happen real quick like and so here goes the installation of the hog 3.0 and other than me hooking up the airline and the uh, power supply it's done And then once again, don't blink as we install the second unit, which they just magnetically grasp each other on a typical sump or a more typical uh, acrylic aquarium or glass aquarium. And the light passes through the glass or acrylic, illuminating uh, the surface on the inside where the water is at. The air bubbles basically create a movement of water with inside that chamber on the inside and of course the light at some point encourages the growth of algae. So with the hogs in position it's now time to hook up the air pump. And so hooking up the air pump is as simple as anything to do with an air pump. It's just the addition or the slipping of the hoses onto the end of those little uh, barbs on the end of the air pump. That in turn drives uh, the hog algae scrubbers and what it does is those air bubbles are diffused inside the unit creating kind of a movement of water with inside there and what it does is it draws new water in and moves old water out it also at the same time allows that algae to become exposed much more so uh, to the, the light as well as the nutrients in the water itself and so now we just want to hook up the little ballast to a timer or something along those lines. And for example's sake, we've just simply hooked up the ballast into a regular power strip and then in turn drives the little LEDs inside the unit. The red light will encourage a greater growth of algae than say yellow light or blue light and the intensity will also determine how quickly the algae grows. This being the HOG3 the bigger of the hang-on glass algae scrubbers from Santa Monica. In our application, we're going to be hooking up the Neptune Apex Aquarium controller onto the system, and that is what's going to be the timer or timing source to turn the lights on and off for the algae scrubbers. Typically, you want to run them with about 18 hours on and about 6 hours off. Uh, it allows the plants in there to respirate. Uh, you're familiar with photosynthesis, which is the use of light to encourage through fo um, uh, a process inside the plant to convert sugars into a food source or carbons into a food source for the plant to utilize. That's the reason for the on and the off cycle. You have to have the yin and the yang for lack of a better description. Possibly in the very beginning you may adjust that light cycle so you've got more light uh, to encourage the growth of algae, but ultimately 18 on, 6 off is fine. Do you enjoy watching LA Fish Guys? Do you feel like a fish guy when servicing your own aquarium? Would you like to feel like part of the LA Fish Guy team? 
for a limited time. Get your LA Fish Guys t-shirts or embroidered polo shirts today. These 100% cotton Hanes beefy tees are $20 and the embroidered black polo t-shirts are 50% cotton and 50% polyester and are only $25. Visit myfishtank.com. Look for the LA Fish Guys link and order your LA Fish Guy shirts today before they sell out. Some sizes may be limited and may not be available. And a shout out to Craig Durham and a happy belated birthday to Ken Kato of Boston. And be sure to visit the LA Fish Guys website to see all 152 reinstated LA Fish Guys episodes, including the original 35 shows. And always keep moving forward. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hawk and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. The hog algae scrubber also comes with these little blackout screens. Uh, the idea is in the very beginning of the algae's growth, it won't like um, an abundance of light. As a matter of fact, the interior of the um, scrubber, which is white, makes for an extremely bright environment and that will deter some of the good algae uh, from growing right away. And so what we want to do is during the first couple weeks of operation, we want to slip this little uh, blackout screen between the LEDs uh, and the outside of the sump that we're placing it on. That'll decrease the light in there a little bit. Um, and it'll help allow the algae to get a foothold and get started. Once that algae's begun to grow, you can then remove entirely the blackout screen. And that screen is fairly easy to install, just uh, again on the outside, not on the inside. And then the magnetic grasping will allow it to uh, hold itself together. So what we've got is the hog algae scrubber, the lights are on. We've got a little bit of a blackout screen in there just to decrease the algae growth in there and I'll go ahead and do this to the other one as well. So your question at this point is why the hog as opposed to say GFO uh, or bio pellets uh, or even um, probiotics? Well to me the major difference between all four versions of trying to remove nutrients from the system, the GFO requires replacement of the media because at some point it gets exhausted. The bio pellets require the replacement of that media because essentially they just eventually dissolve uh, within the water or the cylinder that you're operating them in. Uh, the probiotics 
which is the addition of different bacteria into a system, eventually the supply of those bacteria uh, dries up. You use them up. You have to go get more. You have to buy more bio pellets. You have to buy more GFO. With the algae scrubber, once you purchase it, its initial purchase and whatever minimal operating expense occurs in the meantime, that's the last of what you need to buy. The algae scrubber continues to grow its own media. Uh, you don't have to replace that media. Uh, it just continues to grow week after week. You're harvesting, you're pulling out handfuls, approximately a handful uh, per unit of algae growth. And that algae growth drew nutrients from the water itself. And so through natural means of which no additional cost to you, the algae scrubber continues to perform, perform, and perform. No additional cost. And the frequency that one might clean out that algae would be, in my case, I would think weekly, uh, certainly at the least every two weeks. And the fact that there's two of them here not only provides redundancy, but it also allows me to alternately clean out each unit. Thereby, maybe each unit is essentially allowed to run for two weeks, and yet I'm alternately cleaning it out. So that there's always some growth of algae and some absorption occurring as opposed to uh, the algae having to start over new. And when I say start over new, as I clean out those um, little scrubber boxes, I'm not going to get 100% of the old algae out. So there's always seed, for lack of a better description, uh, that's going to encourage the new algae growth with inside the scrubber to start over again. And so two units, again, gives me duplicity. Uh, it also gives me a greater capacity uh, for either the number of fish or the amount of food. Um, and it splits up the cleaning of that one versus the other alternately, say, every other week. So now there's a number of different models of the hog, which again stands for hang on glass. It just simply clamps between two halves of a glass or an acrylic panel, whether that be down in the sump or actually in the tank itself. <clears throat> but the way to determine which size you want is really based on the amount of food that goes into the tank. In other words, the hog point five assumes that it's half of a frozen cube or the equivalent. The hog 1.0, one cube. The hog 2.0, two cubes. And the hog 3.0, three cubes. And then as you double or multiply those units, you would in turn double or multiply the amount of food that the hog would be able to handle. The other side of that coin is how bad is your algae situation in the tank? The advantage here is we're starting from square one. Theoretically, there's no nutrients in there, and I probably could have started off with a hog 0.5, but ultimately that wouldn't do me any good. I've got two hog 3s on there. If this was a tank, such as my previous one, that had a severe, long-term, old algae problem, I might want to start with a large hog, it having a greater capacity for removing those nutrients from the water. So again, in regards to the hogs, it's based on the number of fish cubes or the equivalent of fish cubes fed on a daily basis. This tends to also apply with the drop as well as the surf algae scrubbers from Santa Monica filtration. And so that's the hog algae scrubber installation from Santa Monica filtration. It's a pretty simple unit to install. It's very effective. Uh, it usually takes a couple weeks to a couple months before it begins to grow what's referred to as the Easter egg grass, which is really long, narrow, brightly green colored algae. Um, it's dependent upon the available nutrients in your system, whether they be low or high, they all have an effect. Uh, over the course of the last few years, I've installed a number of algae scrubbers on many of my service customers' tanks, and I've seen benefits from all of them. The bottom line is, in setting up a tank, a reef tank, or even a fish tank, you do want to take into consideration some means of trying to control or remove nutrients. Water changes alone won't do it. 
I spent the last 25 years figuring that one out. So as this tank continues to move forward, and later today we're going to be introducing all of the uh, various individual components that are going to be driven by the Neptune Apex system, and I encourage you to come back. I think what we're going to do is a little mini-series um, across between uh, Aquarium Tech Talk, which is the new version of LA Fish Guys coming out featuring Scott Leaf, uh, as well as a, a, a contribution on the uh, Neptune people's part with an Apex unit, and we're going to call it, I think, the Apex Series. We're going to show you how all those individual components that the Apex can drive, will drive. And so until then, always keep moving forward.